Hey folks, Jonathan here. Alright, so since I've got a couple days waiting on parts for our truck, I think uh, I want to work on, well, I wanted to fire the boiler up and run some steam engines, but I don't like firing the boiler up if I don't have anything new to run. Uh, you know, it's sort of redundant when you uh, run, you know, everything one time and then fire it up and run the same engines. I like to add to the collection every chance I get. So we've got a lot of engines that need work on, a lot of engines that need tested. And I think I'm going to try and test this engine. Now we've missing a part we're going to have to make. We've got a broken piece right here. Uh, we're going to make this lever, which is just like this one. And then we're going to make that rod to come up from there up. And it don't have to be exactly the same, but it'd be nice if it was pretty close. So, uh, shouldn't be any issue at all to make this rod I need. Uh, shouldn't be much to it. So, not sure what we use for turnbuckles on the end of that. I have to come up with something. Got it apart. Got a couple pieces. Well, I got one thing broke and then. Well, two things broken, one thing missing, and I'll show you what they are. We've got everything freed up and working. So what we're trying to do is I'm getting ready to fire uh, the steam engine or the boiler up for Friday. So Friday morning, probably going to fire it from about 10 to 3 or 10 to 4. So I've got a bunch of engines hooked up I want to show you, but I want to show you what I've got going on here. So here's the linkage that's missing. I have this piece, but I don't have these knuckles or this arm to go on this side. And then, of course, the arm broke off also, so I've got to spin it here. And I want to eventually, I would go back to making some originals, because uh, this one's brass, that one's cast. But making something that looks more like original, but for now, this will work. Uh, we just want to get something together on it and be able to test it and run it. And let me show you what I've hooked up for engines and what we're going to be doing Friday. Okay, so we got the two stumps out of the building here. And I'll show you the picture of the one stump. That's a buddy of mine standing beside me. He brought his little uh, Kubota over because I already had a roof over the building. I was gonna bring that big my case at 580 up here and do it, but uh, it was easier to do that, you know, because it's so tall. I didn't want to hit my building. So uh, anyway, Doug Stomp out. He had a new little root cutter he used. Done a real good job. You know, it's just a single blade and it cut the roots around it. And then I uh, actually he dug around it and then I backed up with the wrecker and pulled it out. And then uh, the second stump was even bigger, so. We went way down in there and then cut it off. So we cheated a little bit on the second one, but it won't matter because it's so deep. Uh, I think we went six foot or something. So no big deal on it. Uh, here's what we got to set up for engine. Let me wipe this lens off. Okay, there's a little spot on the camera on the top right. Hopefully it won't show up in the video. I can see it in the screen though. It's bothering me. Anyway, so let me see. We got the turbine engine. We've got the Soleil two-cylinder engine. We've got the Airy Steam uh, shovel engine. We've got the early uh, one made in Kirkuk, which is a McElroy and Armridge. Uh, we're thinking, like I said, the only advertisement they made was in 1881, and they was out of business by 1892, so this is 1880s. Uh, then we've got the start of it I think is how you pronounce it but it's a uh, this engine here was for a blower and I'm hoping to have this pulley moved in and a belt on it before we fire it if we don't we don't but I mean we're gonna see uh, I've got an oiler coming I'm gonna try to get on that one it's hopefully gonna be here today uh, I don't mind running them shortly because I put oil you know in the system before I hook the pipes up and I just don't want to run them for very long. I've got an oiler on this one, so this one we can run a while. Uh, this one's got a knock that I've got to try to adjust out either, you know, the day, the day we fire or before. 
And like I said, we're going to get some oil on this one because I like to run this one for a little while. Let it run. It, you know, it's been sitting for a lot of years. These here, we're just going to fire and shut off just for looks to run. This we may run a while. So what I've done, so I took some advice from a buddy of mine named Ernie. Knows more about this than I do when it comes to the steam piping and all that good stuff. And uh, he was the lead engineer at the museum. But uh, anyway, what I've done was what he told me. He said to come in from the top with your pipes and that'll help keep the water out. And then I've actually got this pipe slanted just a little bit. And what I've done, instead of putting the drain down here, I actually put the turbine engine down here. And turbine engines don't mind water and they seem to like it. <laughs> and so it's got a, you know, a water drain on it here so we can uh, make sure that, uh, you know, not a bunch of water gets in it, but I mean the water that goes in it won't hurt it like it will a regular steam engine. And, and like I said, all the pipes are going out top and I do have a drain on it also here. Uh, but that's probably going to be for extended down for steaming hot dogs. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what I've done. So we'll see how this works. We just extended over from our pipe that we had to run to the uh, Schofield engine. And uh, I've got a drain on that also coming down. So things gonna work out fine. I cut 12 by 12 beams and two of them and made sort of a table. And I figured that would be good enough I can bolt down to it. And I didn't want them on the ground. I wanted them up some, but I didn't want them up too high to where you couldn't see them good. So I think this is gonna work out good for, for being able to look at them while they're running and see them. All right, folks, here's the arm. I was gonna show you it was broke. Now this was broken and it was spread out about, I don't know, a quarter inch or so. So I've got it in the vise and I've got it pulled together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill up through, up into here two times. One here and one here. And then we're going to thread it. And I'm going to actually screw a quarter 20 bolt all the way in and then cut it off. And that ought to pin it together and make it strong enough that it'll handle what we need to do. So that's our plan. All right. Okay, folks, here it is. This one's bottomed out. I'm going to cut it off, and then I'll bottom this one out also and cut it off. And it'll go in a good ways past the crack. And we'll just leave it. And then uh, maybe later on we can fill it in and hide it. But, we, you know, like I said, we're not restoring it. We're just repairing it. So, all right. is bad today folks uh, all right so we got the eccentrics all back together I had to replace one bolt that broke uh, all this is back on you can see our repair uh, which will do fine so this only slides up and down as you can see so I had to pull the valve covers off and both of them had broken uh, drains on it so we got that taken care of, got it back together, cleaned them out. Uh, now we've got one broke off on this head, which is sticking out, so that's not going to be a problem at all. I've uh, got more drains. Could have cleaned that drain out and maybe, you know, make sure it works good. And make a part and make that linkage, and we'll be rolling right along. Okay, folks, caught up, all finished up with uh, what I'm planning to do before we fire. And I was gonna fire Saturday. This is Thursday, but it's gonna rain again this weekend. So we're gonna fire tomorrow. So I've got the winching engine together. Now you can see I, I welded the uh, arm on it and I just made one out of uh, links for a cat one, uh, I think it was cat, category one, three point. And you can see how it works so they work together so that's how you get forward in reverse so we're going to try that out see how that works and uh didn't really feel much of doing it because there wasn't really much there to do but uh both heads <clears throat> took them off and we cleaned it out i've got new valves on them uh one was broke one wasn't uh had the valve covers off and everything's good to go there. Got it piped up. Uh, I got it piped with one inch pipe. It's running out, so I had to do some uh, 
little extensions here it don't matter but we've got to run it into our extra spot all right folks so here you go this is what steam engine fuel looks like got plenty of it so some of this is from a pallet factory this is all rough cut that that they had cut up and uh there's oak oak slabs pine which pine don't matter in this we clean the flues out often and then we've got some stuff that a neighbor dropped off then we've got some stuff that i had gotten before from another guy and then we've got some stuff that my son dropped off so wood is not a problem uh, I've been needing to fire so I can burn up some of this. All right, folks, we're fired. It's Friday morning. Now it's not gonna rain Saturday, that's what they're saying. I just throwed a bunch more in there, so uh, burning good. And it won't take long. An hour and a half. Probably we'll have steam pressure up. We'll wait on it. All right. All right, folks, uh, all that running I done yesterday, I started about 8.30, and I didn't stop until about 4.30, but I didn't film not one thing. Uh, but we're going to do that today. I'm firing again uh, next day. But we figured out everything we've got problem-wise. Of course, these have got to be concreted down. There's no way around it. Uh, move too much, even the one on the big base. Um, so we'll do that later it's not a not an issue there at all and let me see problems I, every engine's got things that need worked on well i say that but not not really everyone but anyway this one here packing is leaking terrible on the bottom side of the rod not bad on the valve but that's fine that's an easy fix uh this engine came from montgomery alabama uh <clears throat> Had no base, had no flywheel, and it's a marine engine, but we don't know the maker. It don't have a name on it. Looks a lot like the engine that was in the uh, African Queen, and but like I said, it is a, a marine engine. And uh, this thing was laying in a, in a barn on its side, and I bought this at a really reasonable price. Guy shipped it, uh, fastened all to me, and it's a nice engine. So this one. Sturdivant. This is the uh, uh, blower engine. It, the company really made a lot of, uh, they, they specialized in blowers. And this engine here may or may not have ran a blower because most of the engine ran blowers had a uh, internal governor or automatic governor. This does have the pulley on the inside and for the flat belt. And I did put a governor on it and i think it'll run with it i just got to move this pulley in and it's stuck of course so we haven't done that yet uh running wise besides it not having a flywheel it will not run on air without a flywheel but it does run on steam without a flywheel because you got a lot more expansion in the steam so this would not run on 180 psi of air but it will run on 25 psi of steam that's the difference between air and steam is the expansion rate uh the air is not expanding you're just compressing it so uh anyway we'll get this one finished up but when it comes to leaks uh there are none good runner no problems there just got to do the belt uh get the governor right this one no problems at all i don't think uh it ran good worked good got the oiler on it ran it quite a bit uh probably 10 times no problems at all this one uh really no problem uh, i don't have an oiler on it so i just started up and uh, just like a demonstration engine shut it back down uh let me see this one here we've got it's running forward and good and not great in reverse or vice versa one way or the other i don't know which way we would say was forward and reverse but one way it runs great the other way it's got some issue and it's not a major issue it's just a, a starts out good and then it starts fluttering like the valve is not staying on seat something's not quite right with it but it runs good one direction runs pretty good other direction so that's all it needs besides getting a mechanical lubricator on it also and i think there was one bolted on it originally and probably yeah and running to there you can see where it's got a 
place at. So we're going to get one on it. We're working on getting a bunch of mechanical lubricators and a bunch of uh, hydrostatic lubricators also. So, all right, uh, turbine engine. Uh, I don't think I had any problems with this one. Uh, governor's sticking a little bit on it. Uh, besides that, really no problems with it. It ran really well, and uh, not bad. All right, so that brings us to the winching engine. Uh, Rain good, has some major issues. Major issues as in leaks uh, really bad on that valve gear. This was the valve, the valve rod that was uh, sticking. So I got it freed up and all, but it's leaking really bad there. Uh, I think it's leaking out of the rods too. I mean, it, it, we're probably gonna make rods for this eventually. Uh, let me see, there was an issue right here the gasket's blown out and it's leaking right in this area so it really needs a gasket there and I think that's about it I mean I'm just gonna need seals on these rods too and I'll check the rods if they're smooth enough we'll just pack them and won't mess with them but uh, but running wise forward reverse no problem ran good just a lot of steam a lot of leaking uh, but what we found out is exactly what we wanted to find out we wanted to test it and it done fine so we're going to get into the boiler fired up and then I'll run each one of these engines for you. Let you see, you know, how they run and uh, how bad they leak. But uh, we ran the big, of course the Bates cordless we ran the whole time yesterday. So it ran for quite a few hours. All right. Okay, here is the little engine running. Had a little bit of a noise, but nothing major. Don't know how to sound on this camera. You know, this camera likes to pick up a lot of noise. Uh, it's not a good place to put a drain line that's directly above it, huh? The uh, draining water into it. So that's a good running little engine. This is the run I had on the tailgate of my truck and it was shaking my whole truck. So. But um, it already had a hole in the center of it, so I just T bolted it down with a uh, board at the bottom and a this is a threaded rod and a board down at the bottom. All right, let's start up the Erie engine here. A lot of you probably seen this one run. All the water we can get out of it. And close the valve. And open it on up. So there's that one, it runs good there. All right, let me open some valves up. Get all the water out of this one. Start it up. Too much water to put out. Not a bit. I don't want to run in reverse today. Definitely a runner. Like I said, we put this on the end because it don't mind water so much. We'll let it run the water out real quick.
Okay, folks, I'm low on pressure now, and I forgot to video this one. So we're going to try it, even though it probably won't run. And if it won't run, I probably won't post it, so it'll be all right. Leaking bad, but there she's running. If you can see it, you reverse it. This is really easy. And there you go, so we got a lot of seals to do and leaks to fix, but we can take care of that problem. Well, she runs pretty good. That'll be a nice little engine once you get a flywheel on it. All right, well, that's it anyway. I appreciate everybody watching, and until next time, bye.